I was working with a minister who had reached an impasse in his marriage and his wife was really dissatisfied. She wanted him to be more intimate, more vulnerable, more real with his feelings, not so spiritually detached. He wanted her to look her in her, in, in her eyes and say, I love you, and let her know when he was scared, you know, really feel more connected. And the more he asked it, she asked that, the more he felt blocked, stuck, and offended. So we worked together and, we, and he got in touch with under that block. Whenever he felt blocked and defended and cut off, he felt a real sense of deficiency and there was a real harsh inner critic who basically said, you're a hypocrite. In other words, you know, his critic was saying, you're preaching love but you don't embody it, that kind of thing. You know, his inner critic would say, you can comfort and guide as a spiritual advisor you're fine with people as long as you're in the role of the minister, but as soon as you're peers, you can't be close. His critic would say, you know, you've all your life you've never been close to anybody. Uh, so there was a lot of shame. So his practice with Rain was to recognize and allow when that trance state would come where he'd feel like he was being asked to be intimate but he couldn't because he felt fundamentally like something was wrong with him. He just couldn't show up. Then when we worked together we started investigating and when I'd say, well, what does that shame place feel like? He said, it's a sinking hollow ache and I can feel it in my heart and in my belly. And I'd say, you know, what's the belief going on? I'm an imposter and I'm defective, and people will find out. Mostly it was his wife. He, he felt like he couldn't be real because she'd find out that he was defective. And then when I asked, well, what does that hollow shame place most need? Um, he said it needs forgiveness, it needs love, it needs somebody, a presence that sees my goodness. So that was the investigate. And then nourish. Okay, now when we nourish, in some way we want to bring love, compassion to that place. And so, and I often put my hands on my heart because I have found, and so many have found, that touch really makes a difference. And research is showing it too. There's a whole nexus, a neural nexus in this area. If we touch our heart, it helps, it brings a kind of warmth and a contact. It actually arouses the parasympathetic and decreases the sympathetic, which is calming and soothing. But nourish, nourish can happen through words, through a message, through imagining energy. Um, for him, it was, he was in a sense calling on God's love and his own love and trying to send it in. He said he, was, he just tried to let it pour into his chest and into his belly. And he had a sense of saying, it's okay, you can just surrender into love. It's okay, surrender. So that was Rain. He recognized and he allowed, he investigated, he found out where it was living, he nourished. Post-Rain, and this is really important, in the moments after nourishing, to sense, oh, so what's this like? He felt a kind of spaciousness. He felt a, a vibrating, loving awareness that felt spacious. And that's where there's a shift in identity. And by the way, the shift in identity is really um, the signature of freedom. When we're in the trance of unworthiness, our identity is small and deficient. After rain, when we check, when we've really nourished, there's a sense of spaciousness and tenderness and no solid self-centered self. There's just an open presence. And this is what he discovered. He had to do it many, many rounds because, of course, all the old feelings and beliefs would keep coming back. And so many rounds of bringing his, you know, kind of hands to his heart and calling on God's love and his own love and pouring it inward and then sensing a larger sense of being. Months later, he shared that for the first time in 26 years, he said he and his wife were feeling each other's hearts. Came from repeated self-compassion. This is a poem, a, a poem from Rumi that he liked, so I thought I'd share it. Very little grows on jagged rock, 
be ground, be crumbled, so wildflowers will come up where you are. You've been stony for too many years. Try something different. Surrender. <laughs> 